Hi everyone. So uh, Fabrice Deray, I'm working on uh, something called Capilune, and I'm going to talk about uh, a bit about yeah IPFS and content discovery and uh, what that means to uh, bring IPFS into a, a full stack OS. Um, so uh, Capilune is a, a web uh, OS that is based on uh, web technologies. So it's kind of the continuation of uh, work we did at Mozilla for Firefox OS. And it's, uh, we are a few years later, so things have changed. We can experiment with uh, very interesting new things. And uh, so that's, that's a very experimental project, uh, which gives us a lot of opportunity to try new things. And also because we have control over the full stack, we can do stuff that is not uh, subject to limitations like many people have when they try to, well, it's not a criticism, but when you have to target existing browsers or existing OSs, you have a lot of barriers and a lot of impedance mismatch. And uh, <coughs> with, with Capitan, we, we don't have that. We, we, maybe we need to build a bit more, but at least we, we know that we, we can do it. Uh, and we, we have the choice to make it. So yeah, we've been playing with uh, IPFS, so like uh, uh, IPFS and IPNS protocol handlers are implemented in Gecko. Uh, so here you can see, for instance, it's a, it's a real IPFS URL. So uh, behind the scenes, it's using a gateway, but from the web page and all the DOM APIs, what they see is an IPFS URL, so uh, everything like relative URLs resolution, uh, course rules, CSP rules, and, and everything applies directly to that IPFS URL. <coughs> um, that, that works pretty well. It's not using the trustless gateway yet. That's gonna come later. And uh, once we have trustless gateways, support, I think, will be in a fairly okay situation to even try to push that upstream. Um, that's gonna be a fun discussion with <laughs> <laughs> for our colleagues. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that, that would be reasonable. You don't need to bring whole IPFS stack for that. So that, that makes things a bit more reasonable. Um, yeah, so we can also easily publish uh, to IPFS. So it's not done the same way that Move showed with students doing fetch. Here we, we can push any local resource, that means any blob, to uh, IPFS using estuary. Uh, so yeah, you, it's a picture that I took this morning during the session. You, you can see progress and you end up with uh, a nice URL that you can share with a QR code, copy to your clipboard, whatever. <coughs> um, we have you can support that we started to use to get the permissions and capabilities for some of the APIs that we added. So you can choose whatever identity you have. It's a local uh, DID that is created for users and you can choose what capability you grant and for how long. And, uh, and yeah, that's uh, fairly basic, but uh, use a few cans. But I think it's a, it's a nice way to show how that could differ from the regular permission schemes that web browsers are, are using and how that, that fits with the uh, model of, of uh, yeah, the web model in terms of security and permissions. So we identified some uh, interesting points around uh, what does that mean that you can uh, move uh, around uh, all these uh, permission descriptions, for instance. <clears throat> oh. So when, when I talk about Capilun to people, very often they ask me, oh, okay, so you need an app store because where are people gonna find interesting content and apps? And uh, my answer is always the same, it's, it's like, no. No, I'm not going to build an app store. I absolutely don't want to do that. That's, and, and so once I've said that, I need to explain why. And I think that's pretty interesting to uh, dig a bit deeper into that because um, app store are not just a regular, just another app that you put on iOS. We'll see with uh, iOS Android. It's a very uh, fundamental building block of these OSs. <coughs> and, uh, that's because they, they have multiple roles. It looks like just an app, but it, it's doing a lot of things, uh, both for users and, and developers. But so they, yeah, it's, it's a gatekeeper of what you can run on your device. Yeah, it's your device, but actually it's Apple that decides what you can do with it. So uh, I mean, maybe that's not really yours, I don't know. 
Um, that provides application discovery. Yeah, you'd have no other way to find apps, basically, except going to your uh, app store. That also provides distribution for developers. And that's a, a revenue channel for the OS vendor and uh, developers. So all these things put together, it's, it's, it's a bunch of very different things, actually. And all these functions, uh, I don't think they benefit the user much in the way they're implemented. We see that every time um, the, the way it is uh, done, it's mostly to bring stuff back to the OS vendor. <coughs> so I will, I will go through all these points one by one and, and see how it's done in uh, yeah, um, native OSs, kind of, and how that applies to the current web and, and what we can do with uh, this decentralized web. And what that would mean in, in a project like Capilun, what can we try, what, where are we, what, what's missing. <clears throat> so yeah, native store, get, get keepers of apps. It's, I mean, I'm always very surprised by how people are, how happy people are to write new apps for these OSs, while you know that it's very arbitrary how you can get accepted or rejected in these app stores. There are countless people that, that got just updates rejected while the previous version was fine. Um, so it's, it's a big single point of failure. I, I mean, it looks like a very uh, high business risk, honestly, and also limiting innovation, even if they will claim that it's not the case. <coughs> um, Apple and also kind of Google, they always claim that they need that to ensure very high quality and security of the apps. Uh, it's all to protect the users, right? But I mean, that, that doesn't hold. You, you know, they, they have millions of apps. There's a lot of crap. There's a lot of malware. They're, they're, it's, it doesn't have to, to look very far to find some. Um, also, <coughs> unfortunately, it's, it's a very nice tool for censorship. Uh, try to get a VPN in China on iOS. No, you can't. And, and that's just one example. But that's, that's uh, anything that centralizes control, of course, that's going to be used for that. Um, but from a technical perspective, uh, one, one reason for that is that all these platforms are coming from a fairly old uh, application model, which is just like processes that have pretty unfettered access to uh, <coughs> the platforms they run on. And, and they're not designed to run on trusted code in, in a very uh, nicely sandbox way, like, like a web browser or web runtime can do. So they don't really have in some ways, they don't have another choice, technically, than to enforce policy decisions, because they cannot just rely on, on technical means. <clears throat> so if you contrast that with uh, the HTTP web, where you, your application layer is a browser, well, you don't have to ask permission to Mozilla or Google or, or the WebKit team to put up a new website. There's, there's no URL list of websites that, that can be browsed. You just give them a URL, and they happily uh, will, will try to render it. Um, and, and, and that just works. <coughs> you can update it as often as you want. No, uh, no need to, to, to ask anyone for updates, and so on. Um, one, one thing that I think during yeah, the early days of the web, the focus was very much about, hey, let's create this capability of linking documents. And um, that's going to be great. But they didn't foresee that some people will create silos that will grow so big that they will just suck the oxygen out of the room and, and uh, bring everyone in, in one single place, creating their own closed networks, basically. So you still can put out your own site, but that doesn't matter that much if some huge um, actors are actually getting all the traffic and all the user and all the data. <coughs> But yeah, it's, it was hard to predict, I guess, in, uh, back in the days. Um, decentralized web, we still have links. So we can still do the same thing where you can just pass away URLs. The browser will still happily render anything. And the big difference here is that now we, we can uh, own our data in, in a much better way, because wherever it is, I can just ask it to uh, some content addressing scheme. And I can, I can uh, decouple the computation from my data and bring it back 
in a different way. So to me, that's a very uh, interesting thing about um, hosting stuff on, on IPFS right now. And uh, in Capitun, I didn't show anything because the UI is not great, but I have a feature where um, you can install Wasm plugins and they are totally untrusted. Because the, 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 the API that is exposed by the plugins can be checked. So I, can, I have a demo where I can do uh, just image processing on, on pictures. And, and this is all coming from wherever. And it's, I think it's nice to think that <coughs> it brings everyone to the same level. Like you could, Adobe could, could provide Photoshop features like that. It's fine. If you, if you want to use that and pay for it, it's fine. It's not that we don't want uh, big players to, to play. It's that we want to be able to have anyone uh, playing at the same level. Um, yeah, so discovery uh, next. Uh, so this, <laughs> this screenshot, uh, I just took it from uh, when I opened the, the Play Store on my Android device yesterday. So look at, so this is from Google, the Masters of Search, okay? So first thing, they try to sell me TikTok avatar, and then they realize I don't have TikTok installed. It's like, it, how does that make sense? It's like, they're supposed to, to be the, the best in search. It's like, it's like Amazon trying to sell you 10 fridges because you, you already <laughs> bought one. It, it's, I don't know, it's mind boggling. Uh, um, so yeah, I think they totally lost the track of what, what's good discovery. Um, it's less and less organic. They just pick and choose whatever they want to promote and, and so on. It's, and yeah, relevance is down the drain. Um, it's a sad, sad situation. <coughs> on the web, search, search is a very interesting topic. Uh, in the very early days, we had a lot of search engines and a lot of way to find content. Like some people in the room maybe remember, yeah, AltaVesta, Excite, Lycos, early search engines. Uh, directories like, like Yahoo and Demos. Um, and then one day came Google, the first version of Google, the one that was really, really good, that, that totally destroyed the competition just because they were really so much better. Um, and then Google started to be less good and started to add a lot more like info boxes and trying to keep you in their result page instead of um, finding new destinations for you. Uh, that, that's Google of today. And uh, that's been like, like that maybe since almost 10 years now. Uh, it's been going uh, down in quality. And uh, thankfully, I think we, we, we've seen a few actors uh, recently that are starting to uh, give a run for their money at, at Google. Um, there's, yeah, DuckDuckGo, quite the historical one. But uh, other search engines like, like Niva, Brave Search, U.com, Kegi, they are trying new things. They, they, they are not there yet, but at least they're trying. It's, it's good to see new competition. Um, I personally, I use Brave Search, and honestly, in uh, English, it's pretty good. Other languages, not so much, but for English, I almost yeah, maybe one out of 20 requests. I, I, come, I switch back to DuckDuckGo or Google, but it's not that much. Um, on, on, overall, it's pretty good. <coughs> Um, yeah, so yeah, that's a, just kind of the landscape of uh, search uh, today. On the decentralized search, uh, web search, uh, what, what, can, what can we do? Like, it's, we still have links, so we know that we can crawl it. It's immutable, it's a nice property for search engines. It means that once you, you, you get the data once, you, you will never have to refetch it to check what has changed. You know it's, it, it does, didn't change. So that's, maybe that's a nice property, actually. Um, and uh, we see new innovations in, in search engines that maybe can help us build something for IPFS, IPNS uh, at, at a relatively low cost. So I, I tried something. Brave as a, as a new feature, or a fairly recent feature, <coughs> they call Google's, Google's. And uh, that allows you to describe rules uh, that they will use to rank the search results for, for, for a request differently, according to your own preferences. So you can, you can exclude sites or, or boost some, some sites based on uh, URL patterns. It's, it's pretty cool. It's really innovative. It's typically the kind of thing that Google won't do because you, they don't want you to reorder your search results. 
clearly they don't want that. So I, I wrote a very simple one to just get, I was trying to get uh, URLs from the IPFS gateways, basically, <coughs> and only these ones. So I pushed that to, uh, um, to Brave Search, and I searched for Van Gogh, because I know this one, I just saw it before, the Wikipedia one. And, oh my goodness, we're not there yet. <laughs> that was actually what happened. It, it, Brave didn't find anything. I, tr I tried the URL, and, and it failed. And I think that's a prerequisite that we need. Like, if you want the uh, IPFS web to be crawlable and indexable by these guys, who have all the crawl farms and the indexing power and all that stuff, we need the gateways to be up to, 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 to the task. Um, and uh, that's, I mean, that has been a frustration point for me, the gateway performance in general. Uh, but here, it's, it's really like, it's sad. I thought that I could do a nice demo of showing, finding IPFS content, but, but I could not even fetch it, so. <laughs> um, right, so after discovery, yeah, distribution. Distribution is, is a uh, very relatively simple topic. Uh, you write your app, you want someone to be able to bring it to your end users. Uh, in native app stores, you create your app, you upload it, you don't have to think about it. It's very nice, especially if you're successful because you don't have to deal with um, uh, a lot of traffic and all that. On the HTTP web, it's, it's a bit less uh, nice. You eventually you need to get a domain or a subdomain or whatever, some host pay for HTTP server or manage it yourself. It comes with all kind of annoyances, I will say. It's not that simple. We technical people tend to say, oh, it's, it's easy. You just put it on, on some HTTP server. For many people, I mean, there are many people that can write apps that don't want to have to deal with that. So it's, it's actually a friction point. Um, and we, when we were working on Firefox OS, we, we found that, well, I discovered that in a kind of um, indirect way. So Firefox Web had a, had a way to package apps. Uh, and initially that was done because we wanted to be uh, to have some code that was signed to allow this code to use APIs that were a bit considered dangerous. But some people were using the same capability not for uh, these APIs. They were just using that to bring us packages that we will host ourselves. And so they don't have to do any hosting on their side. And this is where like, I, I realized that, oh yeah, actually people are fine with writing web apps, but they don't want to have to deal with the hosting because that's, that's a burden. And that's, that's absolutely correct, I think. Um, <clears throat> but on the decentralized web, it's, we are fine. You just push that to IPFS and, and you forget about it. You pin it or whatever, but then you don't have to serve it yourself. You have, you have a, this network that does that for you. So that, that's great. Um, yeah, revenue channels, uh, clearly we all know. It's, it's a wonderful way for uh, Apple and uh, Google to, to get billions. Uh, the cut they take from our developers, it's, it's just crazy, like 30% or something like that. I, I'm pretty sure that prevents some apps from just existing because when, when they cut so deep in your margins, something just cannot happen. And we don't hear about that because they just, that just cannot happen. Um, they also, yeah, prevent uses of third party payment system for in apps. Uh, the, the, that was the topic of uh, uh, a lawsuit between Epic and Apple. Uh, the, if you look at what uh, the conclusion was, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Apple won in court in the way that they said, yeah, it's not a monopoly, but still it's anti-competitive behavior. So it's like, <laughs> you're bad, but not too bad that. <laughs> um, the good news is that uh, at least in the EU, EU uh, policymakers are starting to wake up and uh, DMA and DSA have been uh, approved, which means that the uh, EU will enforce some uh, uh, policy and, and some uh, sanctions uh, to prevent uh, anti-competitive behavior. So we'll see exactly how that ends up. 
it's it's not directly related to to browser choice, for instance. It's it's like even like payment stuff and so on. Um, <clears throat> so things are changing. That's good. On the on the current web, when you want to do payment, I mean it's it's very open. You we all bought stuff from websites. You could say, oh, okay, just works. That that's fine, and that's kind of true. Uh, you can you can use whatever payment provider you want. Uh, there was a, a bunch of efforts to bring DOM APIs to help with payments. I think we can mostly forget about them. They, they kind of fail, no one uses them. Uh, they've been mostly, I think, my feeling is that they've been mostly uh, replaced by the user agent, the browser itself, helping you by like remembering your credit card number and so on. Uh, instead of having a, an API that the website would use to retrieve your list of, of credit cards. And that, from, from a user point of view, it's very similar if the UI of the browser is, is good. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, uh, this one I should have removed. Um, on the decentralized web, it's kind of a, yeah, a new space. And, and there are things that we can see coming around around wallets with like stuff like MetaMask Ledger, some others. I think that interesting um, uh, project that try to provide a nice way to do subscriptions. Uh, this one is Unblock. There are probably some others, but I think uh, maybe that will solve the issue with micropayments and um, yeah, getting subscriptions for, for websites. Um, one unknown for me is this all relies on exposing new uh, APIs to pages, and that looks a bit like the Far West right now. Uh, I've seen like, because they inject this uh, Ethereum API in pages, and I've seen that like Brave does the same for their, their wallet, but they have custom properties to say, hey, I'm Brave, by the way. So, and, and some sites do weird stuff when it's Brave or not, so it, it all looks like an interesting space. I don't know if, if uh, who, who's looking at cleaning up the the, the stall, but it, uh, <laughs> uh, it it it's. I think it's important also to 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 get that cleaned up a bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It's so in in a nutshell. Well, well how we with uh, D Web right now? I think we're very good on. Uh, not gatekeeping, it's, it's really gonna open new opportunities for app developers in that sense. Um, a lot more cross pollinization between projects will be possible and so on. When you see what you can do with you can, I mean, I can, I've, I've been uh, yeah, talking with Brooke about how we could like just use the, the WinFS stuff with what we have in Capitoon and so on. So that's, that's a lot of interesting um, use cases that will pop up. Distribution is, to me, it's solved, kind of. You just push your stuff. The only maybe thing is that we may still have a need for signed code. For in, and uh, that means that we need some kind of signature and trust chain around that. Um, I'm not sure how we, can, we should do that, uh, um, but that's something to think about. The, the Payments, yeah, it's in flux. Uh, so many people are interested in getting money. I'm sure something will happen. <laughs> and and the, the yeah, the the the, the part that is uh, that needs work is discovery, mostly because of the, the gateway issues. But I heard um, from uh, Infra about the work on indexers and so on to improve the situation there. So uh, there's hope to. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. Right. Uh, yeah, just one, one one last point is that so it's all about what can we do with IPFS, but I don't think like IPFS will replace the HTTP web in in one go. And then it's it's very nice that the web basic property of linking things uh, just still keep keeps working. You you can mix and match, it it just works as as usual. And that's a super powerful point. Yep. Do you have any questions? So, um, 
So you, you mentioned, uh, and I think we all like this, that you know the web just keeps working, HTTP requests just keep working in IPFS, and I think in my mind until you said that, I was always imagining a world where IPFS kind of consumes HTTP and like dissolves it, but are you imagining then a world where IPFS then, uh, ha like uh, uh, an IPFS user could host a web two within themselves or like it exists within the D web or something like that? What are, what are your thoughts on where so, that future is? Yeah, what that future so, looks like? I mean, Thanks. first I think it's, it's gonna take some time and I don't want to wait that long. So it's, it's important to, to have an incremental path towards that. Then it, if you, need, you, you mostly need mutability for, for what you describe to work, I think, to, to, to work well, because people, people want to update their websites. And they want just maybe sometimes the code, sometimes the content. So we need a good story around that. And what Mov was saying about mutability, it totally valid and, and it applies there, I think. So, um, but it's gonna come, yeah. Yeah, I really saw a th through thread from what I said about wanting every human on the planet to be able to host stuff. Mo's like, I'll just show you a QR code, which works, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And same thing, you're saying yeah. like, let's get that. So I think that's great. Um, I have a question about money. <laughs> so yeah. my question is, um, I, I, I think we do need to do some uh, discovery and reputation, and there's some thinking in more of the um, uh, blockchain land about, um, you know, allow listing or thumbs upping good stuff and downvoting bad stuff. Um, so I think there's some marketing pieces there that we should not forget about. Mm -hmm. um, so on the flip side of that, like, do you think that there are, have you thought about new business models that aren't buy my app or subscribe to my app or, you know, some of those nuances. Oh. Well, so, so one thing when, uh, so I've, I've been in the mobile web OS for a while and what, what we can see is that the, the whole ecosystem is a bit dysfunctional because there's no, for instance, it's, it's a long chain. There's the hardware provider, there's the OS vendor, there are service partners or whatever. And all these people have kind of disaligned incentives at some point. Like the hardware vendor usually, they sell you a device and then they don't want to hear about you anymore. Because that, one, that, need, that, that mostly needs that something is not working well and they will have support cost. OS vendor on the other side, and it's, it's when you get your device that everything starts. And, and same for the, for, the, for the service providers. So if you want that to work a bit better, I think it would be nice to have a, some financing model where we can incentive also, for instance, the, the hardware vendor to, keep, to stay in the loop. So let's say if you had a subscription model for your device, uh, well, you say, I pay, I don't know, $15 per month, and some of that goes to the other vendor, some of that goes to the hardware vendor to incentivize them to provide better support and long-term updates and all that stuff. And some can go to some partners, like say, I want to use Fission to push all the user data and, and, and uh, save it. There's no reason you should not get a cut and so on. So maybe bringing a full ecosystem like that would work a bit better. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, are there any apps being built like for Capulun specifically that use some of this D-Web tech or is it like mostly built-in stuff? In right, right now it's only the, the built-in demo stuff, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, this work was done under a grant that yeah. we set up earlier this year to be able to add some of these capabilities to the basic HTTP default version of the, of the product. So a lot of this stuff actually has only been recently released in builds that Capulun has shipped. What devices does it run on? So right now we have we have images for for Pixel 3a and and we have for the Pixel 3a and for and we have GSI images which are uh, generic system images for Android so that should be installable on any re reasonably recent device. Uh, we are looking at what kind of good device we can use for 
the end of year and end of few years later. So maybe the new Pixel 6a will be a good target. We'll do a full port and, and so on. Yeah. And uh, we, we also have a kind of a port to Linux mobile devices like the PinePhone and the, the Librem 5, but uh, we don't have all the hardware APIs on this one, so it's, it's a bit uh, different. You mentioned that you are using the HTTP gateway. Is it the running a uh, kind of like time mind where you still do the cryptography of verifying the blocks on the device, or do you just trust the gateway that is giving you the required data? Right now, we, we just trust the gateway. And uh, I will switch to car mode, maybe raw mode, but I don't know what the difference is between both, uh, so that I can verify the blocks and uh, be in trustless mode. Yeah. Thank you, Fabrice. Thank you.